Ladies and gentlemen, I have been asked to explain to you what the Boy Scout movement is. It is a tall order, a three-minute talk, an ideal that is being followed by over a million and a half of boys. The movement primarily is a brotherhood of service of boys and men, a school of character and citizenship, of personal efficiency for the good of the community. This sounds highfalutin for what is, as we know it, a band of bare-kneed rascals with cowboy hats and staves in their hands. But remember, you cannot give them character through ordinary classroom methods. You have to use other means. The boys are eager to join in a jolly game of brothership with its healthy camp life and handy pioneer training. Their moral character is developed by our method of self-government under a code of chivalry in the scout law. Their spiritual character is developed by their being brought face to face with the wonders and beauties of nature. The boy is naturally active rather than passive in temperament and we give him opportunities of performance rather than of profession. Scouts are, make themselves efficient not merely for their own good, but in order to be helpful to the community. In other words, they train to be good citizens. Character is far more essential to a successful career of a man. Character in its individual members is essential for the character of the nation. And character in the nation is similarly essential to its welfare. As a school for character, therefore, the scout movement is non-military, non-sectarian, non-political, and non-class. On these lines, the movement has come in the space of 12 years to be adopted by every civilized country. The brotherhood spirit has thus grown up automatically. It is forming a personal tie, not only between the states of the British Commonwealth, but also between the different foreign countries. It may just supply that soul which is needed to make the form of the League of Nations a living force, such as will render war impossible in the future. The movement is growing every day in size and in effect. All we want are more men in this great brotherhood of service to do this joyous work for God their country and the boy, a work that all who try it can testify is well worthwhile. Everybody knows, knows a boy scout when he sees him. Few know how he came about. Well, this is how. Years and years ago, I used to teach my young soldiers in the army the ways of backwoodsmen and explorers in order to make them manly fellows. When it was suggested that I should do the same thing with ordinary boys and so make them into good citizens. So I tried out a scheme with a mixed lot of boys under Sir Percy Everett as their scoutmaster on Brownsea Island. That was in 1907. Then I wrote a book called Scouting for Boys. Before long, thousands of boys reading the book started patrols and troops all about the country. Girls also took up the game. So I had to make a separate organization for them under the name of Girl Guides. And the movement grew like Billio. His Majesty King Edward invited me to come and tell him about it and said that he believed that it would grow to be a big thing. So I left the army in order to run it. His Royal Highness the Duke of Connaught became our president and the Prince of Wales became Chief Scout for Wales. Very soon foreign countries began to take it up also. Education authorities took an interest in it and pronounced the training to be a sound bit of education for developing that most important of all attributes, namely character. 
The training was all a jolly, health-giving, out-of-doors game of camping and hiking, which the boys enjoyed. Then, too, it suited every kind of boy, rich or poor, and no matter what his religion. But it had to be varied to suit boys of different ages. So the movement was divided into three grades. Wolf cubs from 8 to 11, scouts from 12 to 17, and rovers over 17 and a half. Then there were branches. There was sea scouting for boys who liked boating. And there were several lines of scout work for those who were cripples or blind or deaf. The great idea put before every boy was that he should make himself strong and efficient to render service to other people. Consequently, we continually hear of scouts diving in to save people from drowning. Indeed, over 2,000 people owe their lives to the scouts. Now that all foreign countries have their scouts, we have a vast international family of nearly two and a half millions of them and a million and a half of girl guides, all getting to know each other through international rallies and thus realizing their sense of brotherhood. Behind the existing scouts, there are millions of men in the different populations who have in their time been scouts. Thus there is growing up in each nation a body of loyal, dependable citizens and internationally a leaven of men filled with the spirit of mutual trust and goodwill which is the true foundation for peace in the world. In the present time of unrest in the world and unemployment at home, the scout and guide movement is developing a steadying influence that could do yet greater good by further expansion. But for this we need more leaders willing to come and take in hand the thousands of boys and girls anxious to join. Here lies a great opportunity for rendering a soul-satisfying service open to all who would help their country.